Hi guys, can you guys uh, hear me? Oops, I think so. I heard myself. <laughs> yes, perfect. Hello everyone, and welcome to our eLotus webinar today. My name is Donna, and I will be your host and your moderator too. For over two decades, eLotus has been your trusted source for TCM continuing education for acupuncturists. We offer the largest selection of online C courses with over 3,000 C hours. If you are new to eLotus, sign up today for an eLotus account to receive a free 1C course as a welcome gift. And this offer is valid to new accounts only. Hi, Susan. We hope you're excited for today's webinar, everyone. Master Dong's acupuncture is known for its simplicity, ease of use, and exceptional clinical efficacy. eLotus Court, oh, how do I, can you advance it for me? Thank you. Elitus Core is the free ultimate guide for Master Dunk's acupuncture, and you can look up points, watch nailing demos, and read their indications and more. And the best part, it is completely free. And you can visit our website, elitus.org, and click on the Core website to access our Master Dome section. For all Elitus Gold Pass members, you have access to exclusive information on Elitus Core for the application and protocols, plus unlimited access to all English courses on elitus.org. If you are interested in buying a pass, I'll provide all the useful links below. Sam. And we continue to navigate our lives through the impact of COVID-19. The next slide, please. We hope that everyone is keeping safe. Now that many states are open, we are happy to we are happy that many practitioners are taking precautions on preventing COVID-19 from spreading. Visit our COVID COVID-19 TCM resource page at elitist.org for resources on fighting and preventing COVID-19. On this page, you will find resources on how to treat COVID-19 with TCM, official publications from China on both TCM and Western medicine of what we're, being, of what we're done in the hospitals, and interviews with Wuhan doctors, and much more. I'll again share the link with you in the chat room as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and start today's class, which is Master Dong's Magic Points in the Aftermath of COVID-19 with Susan Johnson. Susan is licensed by the state of California since 1985, and she was exposed to Dong's acupuncture in 1982 in the clinic of Dr. Miriam Lee in Palo Alto, California. She was the primary student of Dr. Lee for more than 12 years. Together, they traveled to Hefei, China, and that was in 1987 to study bling techniques, I'm sorry about that, with Dr. Wang Su Jin, and was also introduced to Dr. Yang Weijie, which began a more in-depth inquiry into these extraordinary points. Susan currently maintains a clinical practice in Santa Cruz, California, and also teaches courses in Master Dung's magic points throughout the United States. And she also recently came out with a new book, and I'll let, you t I'll let her tell you more about that after the class is over. All right, let's go ahead and do a quick sound test with Susan. Can you hear me? Hi, everybody. We got people from yes. Argentina, people from Portugal, people from Sweden. Fabulous. Thank you all so much for coming. I really appreciate your time and I hope we're going to have some fun and learn some good stuff today. So um, I'm going to ask you to, if you have questions, I'm probably, it's going to be a little hard for me to track your questions in the chat room and also be presenting because I have a ton of stuff I want to talk to you about today. So I'm going to ask you maybe to email me your questions um, because I try to try to answer my emails relatively quickly and I'm happy to help you. I know what it's like to not be sure about what to do and I had Miriam so I try to provide that for people too uh, to the best of my ability. But nobody's traveling right now so guess what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm writing volume two. So I will speak just for a second about volume one which just came out at the end of 2019 and that is a 565-page encyclopedia on Dong's points. And um, I put everything I could think of into it, uh, along with my cohort, uh, Eric Renaud, 
Eric is an acupuncturist in upstate New York, and uh, the book would not have happened without Eric. So we write together uh, two days a week. We were doing that, and more recently just one day, but we're probably going back to two days again soon so that we can get volume two out. Uh, for a few weeks when New York was sheltering in place, they've opened up a little bit now, so Eric's back in his practice. Uh, but for a while, we were writing every day. So volume two is well underway. It will be the resource book you take to the clinic because it will have point combinations by diseases. So you can look at all the points for headache, all the points for blood pressure, all the points for sciatica, and figure out what kind of asthma is it. Is it lung asthma? Is it kidney asthma? Is it liver asthma? Is it spleen asthma? What kind of asthma? So um, anyway, uh, but the resource book, the one that's out right now, will give you more information than you could possibly absorb, really. And uh, that's the one to study uh, the points with, especially if you're new to Dong's points. There are so many different resources out there right now. They're all good. Um, you know, go for it. Uh, supervision practice is important if you can get supervision. Because if your needling techniques or your point locations are not correct, the points aren't going to work, right? So I don't know if eLotus has supervision uh, webinars. Sorry, I should have checked that out. Uh, but if you go to my website, we have 80 hours of continuing education there. And uh, a, a part of that is supervision and needling techniques. So get that help for yourself, especially if you're still at home. Uh, in Santa Cruz, where I live, Santa Cruz, California, is about an hour and 15 minutes south of San Francisco, and we're still in shelter in place. So um, I am only seeing emergency patients, and I am seeing a few because, you know, people have emergencies, you've got to respond. Uh, so, um, but my practice is basically closed still, and probably through July. Uh, but I worked well. I, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background about COVID and how it's been in my world here in Santa Cruz and with my practice. Um, I worked about three weeks longer than most people in Santa Cruz did uh, who were sheltering in place. And I took a little flack for that. But you know why I did it is because Dr. John Chen did an outstanding uh, e Lotus webinar on March 17th. And um, in that webinar, if you haven't watched it already, go watch it. It's really got a ton of history, a lot of information, all kinds of formulas. I'm not going to talk much about herbs today, except for maybe right now, because you've got John, you've got Tina, you've got Jimmy, you know, you've got the Herb Central there. So you don't need me for that. But uh, what I want to say, though, is uh, why I worked longer than most people in Santa Cruz was because I was getting the SARS prevention formula out to everybody and their brother. I mean, I, I, I spent $15,000 on, on SARS prevention formula to get out to all my relatives and all my friends and all my patients and all of their pa you know, whoever I could, I got that formula out to. I'm really amazed, amazed by that formula. It's uh, further into the presentation on his uh, presentation. It's at least three quarters of the way through, and it's called the SARS Prevention Formula. Outstanding. Uh, I just want to tell you a couple of reports about that. Uh, the way I'm using it is all of my patients, all of my relatives, everybody I could get to take it, took it for two solid weeks. And then the people that have any kind of lung deficient situation or immune deficient situation going on, uh, people with asthma, people with severe allergies, people um, with uh, compromised immune systems, I had them, I, I am having them still take it five days on, 10 days off, five days on, 10 days off, five days on, 10 days off. So they're basically taking uh, 10 days out of 30. Uh, every month they're taking the prevention formula and so far not one single person has gotten sick. So I think that's a pretty good report. Now beyond that I would also say that uh, the people that uh, started taking it right away I got so many messages saying oh my god I feel better than I have ever felt before. I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I'm, I'm quicker, I'm, I'm, I am just feel like Wonder Woman. They would use words like Superman and Wonder Woman, you know. It was pretty amazing. 
and I used really high quality herbs. I mean, I bought from everybody because uh, I ordered the next morning after John's lecture. I got online and immediately started ordering because I knew there would be a run on all of the herbs in that formula, and there was. So I had to order from every herb company I, I work with or know of uh, in the U.S. to get. Uh, some people would make the formula up. Other people would just send me the loose uh, extracts. I used all extracts, and, um, and p the patients capped it if they wanted it capped, or they just took it. It's not that bad. But the Wang Chi and the Baidu and that formula really boost the whole body energy. So I saw that to be true. Now, the patients that were already sick, I had one a couple uh, when, I, when they came into my life. No, well, not came into my life, but when I became aware of their situation, the husband had been quarantined for 11 days already with pneumonia. So he was actually in the almost recovery stage. He was just... You know, just just begin. He had well. He turned the corner maybe two days before I talked to him, and his wife. Uh, his wife, however, was taking care of him, and she was exhausted. She said her brain fog was unbelievable. She was feeling really bad. And uh, when they, I gave them both the same formula because he was kind of in recovery mode, and I only had that one made up. And so the immune boosting. Uh, was appropriate for him. No yellow mucus, you know, I, I, did, I deemed that it was appropriate for him also. Uh, maybe I wouldn't have done that if I'd had a, a different formula ready, but that was the one and it seemed right. And his wife called me after 36 hours and she said, oh my God, after three doses, my brain started to clear. My mind came back. I was able to think straight. My energy started to recover, and then she called me again, like four days later, and said, I can't believe it. I haven't felt this good ever. So um, I had a lot of reports like that. So I'm still going to tell you, get that formula made up and start giving it to people you know. If you have people with especially lung weakness in your practice, uh, allergies, uh, those are the ones who are going to benefit the most. So, um, so yeah, so we still have quite a bit of that around and patients are still taking it on a rotating basis and I, am, I cannot express the gratitude I feel uh, towards Dr. Chen for providing the, that uh, lecture. It is outstanding and please go watch it if you haven't. Okay, so in terms of Dung's points, uh, a lot of the patients that you're going to see have uh, have had lung issues. Oh, my screen went dead. Sorry. Uh, hold on one second. I have to log in here again. If I don't move my mouse, my screen goes away. Uh, sorry, folks. One second. Okay. Got to move my mouse occasionally, I guess. Um, all right, so yes, you will see people with compromised immune systems due to COVID-19 or coronavirus, but you're also going to see people who got hit in wh wherever their weak link was. So if you have people whose livers are um, fatty liver disease with uh, anybody who's had a history of liver disease, um, you're going to need to know points for liver. That would be three yellows and wood inflammation. If you know Dong's points, uh, write this down right now because it's not part of my presentation. I'm basically going to talk, talk about detoxing with, with cupping and about four horses and Sancha three and water gold, water through. That's the presentation that I've got queued up in your notes, uh, in your handouts. So this part is not going to be presented besides right now. If you have people with liver issues, then uh, coronavirus will have hit their liver, whatever the weak link. So um, in that case, you want to use 88, 12, 13, and 14, also known as three yellows. Fabulous points for liver. Uh, uh, they are also very good for detox, but they're used for hepatitis and, and cirrhosis, uh, liver cancer. I mean, there's nothing better than three yellows. I use them a lot, but I also use them for exhaustion due to liver. So if the liver isn't able, if, if, the, bile, if the bile tree is blocked, okay, you know, there's an order of detox. The first order is you've got to make sure that the bowels are moving, all right, and, and uh, open 
and free, okay? And then you might be using some binders to pick up toxins that are coming, uh, that are, you know, stagnant in the digestive system or in the bowel. So you want to move the bowels. Then you've got to open up the gallbladder and the bile tree and make sure that the toxins are being shunted properly out of the liver in, uh, because if the, if the bile tree in the liver is not flowing smoothly, if bile flow is blocked, then uh, toxins are going to be shunted back into the bloodstream. So we want to make sure that the, the gallbladder is cleaned out. Gallbladder also, bile is a uh, detergent to the small intestine. So when it dumps into the small intestine, it's also cleaning all the way through the, uh, the intestinal tract. So uh, you want binders going to pick up those toxins once you're flushing the gallbladder okay, so that they, they're carried all the way out. And then once you, do, you have already um, opened the bowels, opened the bile system, the gallbladder and the liver, then you can do the, your detox. So some people will be toxic from coronavirus, uh, but you have to make sure they're strong enough to handle a detox. Uh, three, three yellows is really extraordinary because it is explicitly for exhaustion due to liver. So uh, you can also add wood inflammation, 1120 wood inflammation is very good for any kind of liver inflammation. All right, these points are very different than the wood anger points, moo. Wood anger points are for emotional liver chi congestion. And you're gonna see a lot of that too. So anybody who has been traumatized by the virus or by sheltering in place is going to benefit from these two points. Look for blood vessels. Be very careful when you're needling not to hit a blood vessel because that's what makes these hurt. And if you go too far lateral with uh, wood anger or with wood inflammation, never do them together. They are never done together. If you go too far lateral with either one, uh, there's a nerve that you can hit there and that'll be unpleasant for the patient. If you hit a nerve, take that needle out. Don't put it back in that treatment or they're going to have a little zing every time they point their finger and that'll make them think of you in the wrong way. So don't, um, don't hit blood vessels and, and take it out if you hit a nerve. And otherwise, uh, wood anger will be invaluable. You can just do the most proximal point if you want. Uh, but if they're really pissed off, do both. In fact, if they're really got a bipolar mania kind of thing, you can do three. Okay, watch for blood vessels. So detoxing the liver, that's about all I want to say for now about that. Um, if you have patients who are kidney deficient, so that's going to be anybody over 40. Sorry, folks, you don't like when I say that, but 40 is when it starts to all go downhill, right? When do we start wearing glasses? Okay, or somewhere around 40. So that's when the kidney energy is starting to wane. Uh, when you've got hot flashes, menopause, you have the yin and yang separating. So um, anyhow, for kidney deficiencies, you're going to use some version probably of Liu Wei Di Huang, whether it's uh, uh, Jermu Di Huang, whether it's or Jer Bai Di Huang, whether it's uh, Fu Gui Di Huang. If their hands and feet are cold and they've got a white puffy tongue with teeth marks, you want to use Golden Book Tea, the Fu Gui, Fu Gui Di Huang. Uh, if they've got uh, hot flashes and night sweats and no teeth marks, you can use the Jirbai Di Huang, all right? If you use any kind of Liu Wei Di Huang or eight uh, flavor version, um, be careful if they've got teeth marks because the Romania is greasy. So if somebody's got teeth marks, you're not going to use uh, Jirbai Di Huang or Liu Wei Di Huang. You can't. But you can use Fu Gui Di Huang. It's a wonderful formula for tonifying both kidney yin and yang. All right, in terms of points, if they've got kidney issues going on, if it's hot flashes and night sweats, then you've got return to the nest and guide points. All right, and sometimes we do the guide points on the left hand because they go really well with the wood anger points. So you can combine those two, put return to nest on the right. Return to the nest and guide are always done opposite sides, but you can do return to the nest on the left and guide on the right, that's fine. Uh, I I only put gain on the left usually to go with because they're more comfortable when you um, put them in with um, wood anger. Okay, and in terms of leg points, you've got three emperors. 
All right, Shen Guan Kidney Gate is 7718. That's our primary emperor. It's an inch and a half below spleen 9. And then we've got a couple of different options in terms of uh, spleen 6. So Dong Spleen 6 is called Man Emperor. In Dong's system of points, he always puts man on the bottom. Right? He's not the only one, but that's not a mistake. All right? You often in Chinese medicine and even in you know, classical texts, you hear about heaven, man, and earth with man in the middle. But man, uh, Dong put man on the bottom because Dong was a Taoist. And in terms of Taoism, we think in, in spirituality in general, we think about um, heaven and earth as as uh, greater than man. Man is the least of those. So Dong always put man on the bottom. Anyway, so Man Emperor is Dong's version of Spleen 6. It's uh, also known as a, uh, uh, well, it's a slightly movable point because, you know, really classic Sanyin Zhao is a fabulous point. You can't get a lot better than crossing point for liver, spleen, and kidney, right? So Dong's Spleen 6, or Man Emperor, is one sun proximal to regular spleen six. Okay, so instead of being four fingers or three sun above the tip of the malleolus, it's actually four fingers or three sun above the top of the malleolus, where it flattens out into the, the tibia. Okay, so we could also use kidney seven. So if anybody has any kind of eye issue, you can use kidney seven instead of man, or as man emperor. And then you can use class a kidney seven or if they have uh, I guess for yin deficiency I would use classic kidney seven but if they have any kind of eye problem whatsoever Dong's kidney seven is actually seven seven two eight and it's found right behind the border of the tibia so at the same uh, on the same line as spleen six okay but like exactly behind the bone as close to the bone as you get slide down the bone uh, level with classic kidney seven, which is going to be in front of the tendon, right? In front of the Achilles tendon. So come right behind the bone, and that's going to be Dong 7728, and that's very good for eyes. So anytime I've got an eye treatment going on, I'm going to have Shen Guan and uh, 7728 involved in that. Okay, so let's go on to um, the slides. Some of these you're not going to have. I said don't put the photos in because that's just going to take up all your printer ink. This photo, though, is um, this is a demo. This is a cupping class I was teaching in Vancouver. Uh, but it's a good photo to show what you might want to cup if you're um, returning to practice and wanting to detox your patient because all of these are lung points, right? This whole upper back is going to clean the lungs. But the area on the side of the scapula, I don't know if you can, yeah, you're not using my screen, so I don't know if you can see me move my pointer. Can somebody in the chat room just say yes or no if you can see me moving a pointer on this photo right now? Anybody? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I can't move that pointer, so somebody just put a pointer on there for me. But I, if I can't move it, then, uh, yeah, the green one is not mine. I don't think I can move that. I'm going to try to move it. No, I can't move it. So you guys, please, you can take away the green pointer because you're not going to know where I'm going with it. So just go ahead and take that off. Thank you. Okay, so what I want to say about uh, cupping is a few things. I use a lot in my practice. I cup a lot of people. Uh, Miriam did a lot of cupping, but I do even more because you can take six, eight treatments off your protocol by cup, cleaning out the gunk, okay? The cups, uh, here's a, a, a really short cupping wrap, all right? Cupping is diagnostic as well as therapeutic, and I'm going to try to tell this to my patients in this way so that I'm sure I've covered it before I do it to them because I don't want surprises. They don't want them, and I don't want them. So cupping is diagnostic as well as therapeutic. It's going to tell me three things. Number one, it's going to tell me exactly where the problem is because I cup an area slightly larger than the part that's affected, you know, that they're complaining about or that I'm targeting so that I'm sure I've covered the entire area, all right? So you're going to see that some cups color and some cups don't color. Even within the same cup, half may color and the other half not. Very specific to where the problem is, all right? So cupping is going to tell you uh, where the problem is. Because once you get clean margins, you're good. You've, you've cleaned out the toxins in the body. 
I keep my patients cleaned out all the time. I cut my patients quarterly probably, at least that. All my patients are kept clean all the time. But I'm going to talk about cupping for a little bit longer because there's a few tricks that you've got to know if you're going to do it. And if you don't hear those, you might hurt somebody. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. So cupping, it tells you exactly where your problem is. It tells you what kind of problem it is. Because if it's a toxin buildup or a muscle spasm, you're going to get color. If you don't get any color, there's no toxins in that area. Okay, now there may still be pain. So if you get no color and the patient is complaining of pain, then it's a nerve issue or a bone issue. Nerve and bone issues do not color. They won't color at all. Now sometimes you're going to have color because you've got a muscle spasm to, uh, to protect an area of misalignment, a subluxation or a protruding or, or a herniated disc. The muscles will spasm to try to solidify that area and protect it. So if you have, you know you have a nerve issue, you know you have a bone issue, and you get color, the color is the, the toxin buildup from the carbon dioxide waste. You know, our, our cells use oxygen, they give off carbon dioxide. Okay, when uh, you have pain in, in an area, that the, the circulation through that area is blocked. When the energy is blocked, that carbon dioxide builds up in that area. We call it acid or toxin. Now, a cupping color, a dark color, can be that acid or that toxin buildup in the muscle or in the joint, but it can also be red wine, espressos, you know, uh, spicy foods. It can be pharmaceutical drugs, recreational drugs. It can be lots of other things. But if you don't have any color and the patient is in pain, then you know you have a nerve or a bone issue. And uh, the color, if it colors in over that, then that's a muscle spasm or toxin buildup. So anyway, cupping is going to tell us where the problem is. Cupping is going to tell us what kind of problem it is. Because if it's a, uh, well, it's also going to tell us how bad the problem is. Because if it's really, really black, all right, some of you have seen those cups that are just like the color of a summer plum. You know, black, purple, deep, deep, dark black. They can take a really long time to go away. That's a very heavy toxin buildup in the joint or in the muscle. Joints are, you know, even vertebrae are movable joints, right? Where the ribs come in, those are movable joints. So I may cup uh, the UB channel on either side of the spine. If the medial uh, aspect of those cups is not colored, then I don't cup over the spine. But if it is, then I will cup over the spine because the spine are all movable joints, right? So they're collecting toxin too. Uh, we don't cup the spine unless we need to, all right? But if you get the color on the inside of those cups, then you need to. Uh, if you're cupping towards the outside and you stop getting color, then you've got clean margins, then you're done. You're good. So in this photo, what I want you to see is he's got some really dark cups right in that area um, just below dot delay, you know, upper back kind of, it's not really the uh, Ding Chuan stuff wheezing area, but he's probably dark too right there. You can see governing 14 cup that my hand is over is very, very dark. Now on the outside of the scapula on both sides, all right, half on and half off the scapula, that area is called the toxin area or the poison points in Dong's system. They're called, it's called the poison area. So we want to cup that area to clean toxins of, of the whole body. It's basically a storage unit for the liver to deposit what, what it can't process, all right? What the liver can't deal with, can't clean out, you know, into the bowels or what the kidneys can't eliminate. But it's really more of a liver than a kidney processing plant area. So if we cup that area, um, if it's really dark, we are actually giving the liver a, a, a new storage area in which to deposit, you know, more toxins. And so the patient will feel much better because if that area is very dark, then they are not processing their toxins well or they're ingesting or being exposed environmentally to something that you need to find out about. Either they're taking it in or they don't know about it, but, you know, 
anyway, we need to find out. So I'm always going to cut the toxin area. When I say I keep my patients cleaned out, that's what I mean. I cut their toxin area on either side, okay, half on and half off the scapula. Uh, okay, last thing I want to say about cupping before we move into points is cups should never, never, ever stay on more than 10 minutes. A cup that's on longer than 10 minutes may blister. Now, lots of patients, uh, sorry, not patients, lots of students have tried to convince me that this is interstitial fluid coming out, this is a good thing. I don't know where they got that idea, but in my, my world, it's malpractice. Blistering is wholly unacceptable. And it will happen uh, to your patients if you cut people long enough. Um, you know, you're going to have a blister or two eventually if you've not had it already. Uh, blistering can be from fire cupping when you burn the patient. That's a really bad, bad, bad. But if you leave a cup on too long, it will blister. Now, on somebody whose skin is healthy, somebody who showers every day and towels off every day, you know, their skin's going to be healthy. You could leave a cup on me for 40 minutes by accident and it wouldn't blister. All right, most of you probably. But people who have unhealthy skin or people who smoke, they might blister if you leave a cup on for 15 or 20 minutes. So don't ever leave a cup on for more than 10 minutes. And 99.99% of the time, you're going to be fine. But if you get a blister, you got to tell that patient because don't try to pretend it didn't happen or that it's a good thing. When they get in the hot shower and they feel that hot water hit that blister or they put on their bra and it's right at the bra line or their, their you know, waistband, it's going to rub and hurt. Don't pop a blister. Leave a blister. But if you blister something, Somebody, you give them a handful of free treatment because every time they feel that rubbing on their clothing, again, they're going to think of you, and that's not the way you want them to be talking about you. So you give them four or five free treatments and herbs if it's really bad. Do not blister your patients. It's not cool. It is not okay, and it's never going to be therapeutic. All right, whoever has said that to you doesn't really know. So anyway, here's an example of cupping. Great way to clean out the body. Uh, if you've never done fire cups before, practice on your own thigh. Hey, don't burn anybody. Practice on your own thigh. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that I, oops, I'm moving the pointer and I, it's not, you're not seeing it. Okay, so uh, I want you to notice that the cupping uh, marks that you see on this man are uh, put on, the cups have been put on in triangles. All right, not squares. Triangles leave the smallest possible gap. A gap is a place where the toxins still remain. So when you have really, really, really dark color, then you want to cup them again a week to 10 days later and cup all of those gaps and make sure you've gotten all the toxins out. You don't have to keep cupping people, all right? Cupping should happen in two or three visits for most people, at least 95% of the time. The first time you cup somebody, you'll get 80% of the color out of them. The second time, a week or two later, you'll get the remaining 20%. If that's how it goes, you don't need to cup them again. You can check in with them again in a few months, see if they're repolluting. But if they color, you know, if you get 80% of the toxins out uh, the first time and the remaining 20% the second time, basically you're done. Now, if somebody colors just as dark the second time as they did the first, that has to then be the first time in your mind and you cup them again in a week or two. If uh, you can still see where your cut marks are, then you know how to catch your gaps. Uh, but don't keep cupping. People become cup addicts. Some people, I'm a cup addict, you know. I'll walk around, I'll put one on them and one on me, one on them and one on me. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, it's not really a good thing to keep doing unless they really need it. But every quarter, I'll make sure everybody's cleaned out in the toxin area at least, okay? Now we're going to go on. Please be careful with cupping. Don't burn people and do not blister people. All right, I'm going to start with Sancha 3. And uh, uh, you're going to see this as a tiny little portion of a clip uh, within the clip on four horses that we are going to watch today. Uh, so you'll see the needling of Sancha 3, but it's a, it's a very short clip. This is the photo from that video, and what I want you to notice is where the point uh, insertion is. 
Now, Sancha 3, some people think about Sancha 3 like San, uh, Sanjiao 2. Okay, Sanjiao 2 is a Ying Spring point. It's an ant, not very strong. You know, maybe there's an occasion where we would use it, but I really don't. But Sancha 3, Sancha 3 is a major, major point in Dong's system. It has the, uh, the, the annotation of A04. A04 is because um, it was in Dr. Yang's book in the addendum. It was a point that got left out of the primary body of work. So it was put in at the addendum at the back of the book. In my book, I've got it in with the, you know, points, anatomically correct points with the 22s. Okay, the, the finger points are the 11s, the hand points are 22s, forearm is 33, upper arm is 44, kind of like that. So uh, AO4 is going to be in with the 22s in my book. It's a primary point. I use it all the time. So any time I'm doing an immune system boost, I'm always going to be using Sancha 3. Now Sancha 3 is needled similarly to Sanjiao 2. Okay, Sanjiao 2 is on the web, right? With the hand in this position, Sanjiao 2 would be needled this way. But if we put a, make a fist and insert our needle right between the knuckles. So in this draw, uh, sorry, photo, you can see that the point is not palmar, right? It's right between the, the metacarpal phalangeal joints, all right? The fifth and the fourth uh, metacarpal phalangeal joints, right in between the knuckles. Also, I want all of you who are sitting here, I want you to just feel on your own cell, feel the tendon that is just behind that point between the knuckles. So right in front of that tendon, just distal to that tendon, there's a hole. There's a hole like a tunnel. You can feel that. That's where you put your needle. Now while you're learning this point location, you might kind of bonk, bonk, bonk the bones before you pow all the way in. You know, it's a deep hole there. San, part of what makes Sancha 3 so incredibly powerful is that you are needling towards heart 8. So heart aid is for pain, heart aid is for itching, okay? You're also, um, you're also uh, contacting a needle if you put a needle in at Ho Shi, small intestine three, all right? It would go right through Sancha uh, three point as well. So that small intestine gives us, uh, well, I don't want to go too far into theory. Anyhow, suffice to say, we're going to look at Sancha three and it's... Uh, Let's look at the photo and, I mean, look at the uh, drawing. This is just showing you um, inserting uh, the point. Once you put the point in, uh, the patient can relax their fingers. They don't have to keep their hand in a fist. I used to tell people to keep their hand in a fist, but then I'd come back 45 minutes, an hour later, and their hand would be flat. And so I realized it's not essential that they do that. So now I just put the needle in and then unfold their fingers, let them know they can just relax their hand flat. The needle's going to stay in the proper location, and it won't be painful if it's placed properly. Don't err by going palmar with that needle because it will be more painful because you're getting towards the, you know, the palmar surface, which has a lot of nerve endings and blood vessels. So anyhow, you want to stay back between the knuckles. That's where the hole is. That's where the tunnel is, right between the metacarpal bones, as you see in this drawing. Okay, so Sancha 3 is a bilateral point that is almost without exception also done along with four horses and that's partly why we're talking about it because Sancha 3 for immune system is really unsurpassed. Uh, here's a, a description of the location, um, pretty easy to figure out. That part for colds and flus, um, any kind of allergies, any disease of the five senses. It's also used for tinnitus, for otitis media. Um, fatigue, okay, immune system, autoimmune, muscle weakness, fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, uh, drooping and swelling eyelids, floaters, okay, so that's an interesting connection that we make between the eyes and Sancha 3. But now the rest of these, I want you to look, itching skin, hives or rashes, all right, Sancha 3 is a primary point along with four horses for skin diseases. Wonderful combination. We're going to talk a lot about that a lot more when we get to four horses, all right? But for now, remember that you can also use Sancha 3 with four horses for skin.
Uh, palpitations because we're going towards heart eight, right? So chest pain, chest pressure. Um, you've got rib pain because of the San Zhao, uh, the Xiao Yang connection, gallbladder San Zhao. Um, upper leg, lower back, connecting to gallbladder 32. Okay, I never use it for nausea and vomiting. But, you know, basically I would put in any indication for which it could be used, uh, though I would never use it for that. If somebody had nausea, uh, you might see it improve if you used Sancha 3. I would go elsewhere personally, but, you know, as a side effect, that might get better. Okay, um, comments. I'm going to let you go back and read these because I've probably said just about enough here, but look at the very last line, all right? Because of the connection uh, with the spleen, Sancha 3 treats muscle weakness and uh, used with stomach 43, it treats swollen or drooping eyelids. Now, we're not talking about, you know, um, we're not talking about uh, face acupuncture here, you know, we're not talking about drooping eyelids from aging. We're talking about people who can't keep their eyes open, people who can't read, people who can't drive, you know, problems with the eyes in that way. Uh, okay, we're going to move on from Sancha 3. Here's a little bit of information, uh, uh, most of which I probably already said, maybe I didn't say, um, yeah, I did say palpitations with a fast pulse. For a slow pulse, you're going to use uh, Neguan P6 with liver 2 or 3. Also, Sancha 2 is good for a slow pulse, bradycardia. Okay, let's go, let's come into Four Horses. Now, I had uh, Sam queue up the, the YouTube video, which you can actually find. Um, I've got two separate YouTube channels because... I'm not a techie, right? So I accidentally started two different YouTube channels, and they each have three movies on them. So go look, and one of them you'll find the movie that you're about to watch, Four Horses, so that you can watch it again. It's also on my points DVD. I have a four DVD set. We have a great sale going on right now if you want to check that out on my website. Uh, so, Sam, let's go ahead and run this, uh, run the uh, video. <coughs> it just makes it easier to describe point location if you see it in the video. I'm wondering if I'm supposed to start this. Now we're going to demonstrate four horses. So four no. horses are the point patterns for colds and flus, autoimmune disease, uh, psoriasis, thyroid, very wide application. We use four horses quite a lot. Uh, they're, they're our primary points for skin, but they're also our primary points for asthma, for uh, allergies, colds and flus. So four horses. It's found anterior to gallbladder 31. Sam, could you uh, pause this for a moment or can I? Okay, I think I've paused this video. Uh, somebody let me know if it's not paused. It is paused. Okay, okay great. I wanted to give you a tiny bit of background about this particular person because this is a very interesting video because we caught something on camera that you don't see very often and that is has any have any of you experienced when you put a needle into muscle and it can't pull it out it's not stuck in a joint it's not stuck in a tendon it's not stuck well it is stuck but it's not stuck in something the chi is holding grasping the needle so I want to give you just a little bit of history on this particular patient because it's pretty pretty interesting pretty soon you're gonna see well you can barely see in this photo right now in this paused part of the video three sisters so this is from a supervision class this particular patient uh, well in supervision classes we have two people per table and a ballroom full of tables and people needling each other so you're either needling or being needled for two days straight right it's it it can be exhausting we don't do a lot of needle stimulation for that reason so this particular woman uh was my demo for three sisters which are gynecological points you can barely see those three dots on her medial thigh right now uh, i needled them the previous day so this was a sunday on saturday i i demoed on her she volunteered for three sisters and, uh, and I said, um, well, where are you in your cycle? If you're, if you're close, you'll probably start your period tonight or tomorrow because three sisters will bring on a menstrual cycle if they're close. It's 
not going to bring on a cycle if they're two weeks, you know, they're going on vacation and they don't want to bleed, you know, when they're snorkeling and be shark bait or something. You know, it's not going to bring on a period unless it's in the neighborhood. But if it's fairly close, three sisters will bring on a period. Uh, if the period's overdue, we'll do three sisters to bring it on. So sure enough, she started her period that night. So the next day, she volunteered for four horses. And I got through, I'm, I'm about to needle her left leg. I got through her left leg, and I demonstrated at the very end how we pull the needles up to the surface, up to the heaven level, heavenly level, for skin issues. We put the needle in all the way. We grab the chi. We pull it up to the surface when we're using four horses, Sancha 3, for skin issues. So I talked about all of that and, you know, blah, blah, came around to the other side, started to needle her right leg, and the, the, the middle point and the higher, four, the upper, four horses upper needles, I couldn't pull up when I went to demonstrate the skin uh, treatment, how I would pull those needles to the surface of the skin. I couldn't pull them up. They were actually stuck, like literally stuck. But I could rotate them in either direction, side to side, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise. I could stimulate, very strongly stimulate, but I couldn't lift the needle. So that's what I wanted to tell you so that you're paying attention when we get to the stimulation on those points because it's pretty cool that we got it on camera. You don't usually. Uh, also, you're going to see her thighs jiggling while she's laughing because I put my foot in my mouth and you'll hear that too. Okay, let's watch this video. Uh, we can also find it by locating the top of the patella again. We come up on a line from the lateral corner of the patella. Straight up. We want to make sure that the legs are relaxed completely, so rocking like this. Okay, notice how I rocked. I didn't grab her patella and rocked. I rocked on either side, so I rocked the joint capsule. You can also rock the ankle, but you don't want people holding any energy in their thighs when you're doing deep needling in the thighs. Also, I'm going to be checking the, going back to check the patella every single needle because depending on how people hold their feet, you know, some people have their bladder channel on the table and other people are towing in. So you have to pay attention to that because it changes your line. So I measure four fingers. She's almost exactly my height, one inch taller. Four fingers twice plus three. Then I want to take that marking and match it up with the corner of the patella. So I'm going to come wide just a little bit. Now, if we weren't sure, we could check and see if this is gallbladder 31. Sore. Right there. So we can come forward of gallbladder 31, but you should be able to count from the top of the. So we're talking about eight sun above the top of the patella. Now, in most of Dong's point books, you're going to see them um, locating this point nine sun above the popliteal crease. But who can see the popliteal crease? You can't see the popliteal crease. And the reason it's called nine sun, well, Gallbladder 30, middle horse is two and a half to three sun anterior to gallbladder 31. The distance between the greater trochanter of the femur and the popliteal crease is 18 sun. Okay, so halfway is gallbladder 31. So in Dong's system, that point is 88.25 and it's called nine miles. Nine miles is gallbladder 31 halfway between the greater trochanter of the femur and the popliteal crease. So if we consider the popliteal crease and the patella, it would be about halfway, uh, you know, the, the width or height, actually, of the patella. So if we come to the top of the patella, okay, we, we assume a patella is about two inches or two sun. So the popliteal crease would be in the middle of that patella, so the top of the patella would be eight sun up to gallbladder 31. So our middle horse is just anterior, two and a half to three sun anterior to gallbladder 31. So we measure four fingers twice plus three. All right, I'm gonna say that a few times here.
Okay, eight sun above the, the top of the patella. And also we're gonna put our needle right where the muscle changes from the, the uh, horizontal plane to the vertical plane. We wanna be right where that muscle starts to curve down. It will be on a line directly up from the outside corner of the patella. All of those landmarks will get you to the right location. These points are not gripping at all because she's not sick. So four horses is how many fingers apart? Three. Four horses is three fingers apart. Okay, that's a little mnemonic uh, that a friend of mine made up. Four horses is three fingers apart, and three yellows is four fingers apart. Okay, that's a good one to remember. Four horses are three fingers apart and three yellows are four fingers apart. Great mnemonic, put so it we, in your brain. So we find where we think we want to be and then come back and look at the patella again. Where's the patella? Make sure that you don't go off to the side. I've got a fancy needle there with two sleeves on it. I'm experimenting. Three fingers below, come back to the patella and check again. Always checking your patella. Right where the so that's pretty strong stimulation. horizontal and the vertical planes meet. Okay, this is four horses. Middle horse is your primary point supporting above and below. Now if we were treating the patient for skin disease, psoriasis, eczema, urticaria, rashes, allergic rashes, itchy skin, anything having to do with skin, sensitive skin. Then we would do a strong stimulation on four horses. Leave the needles about 10 minutes. So now I'm supposing the needles have been in 10 minutes. Before I leave the room, I will then lift these up so that we're at the skin surface, or at the heaven level. Okay, this is gonna be a skin treatment. And then I'll stack my boxes around those needles and blanket to cover them. Okay, last, right before, last thing I do before I leave the room. Now if I'm using four horses, I'm almost always, without exception, going to also be using Sancha 3. Mm -hmm. Also good for itching, also good for rashes, skin diseases, immune system, all of those. We want to rock the leg to make sure it's completely relaxed. Whether you're doing three sisters, passing points, four horses, or three yellows, always rock the leg to make sure that it's completely relaxed. Four fingers, twice, plus three. Mark your point. Come back and check the patella. It has to do with so I need to go a little are. bit wide here. Okay, you need to check your patella. One more time. I've looked away. Make sure it's nice and soft. Four, four, and three. Check your patella. Perpendicular to the surface. Three fingers above. You can Check also feel the groove. Make sure you're still There's on the group. right line. Move. Put your consciousness in the tip of your finger. Three fingers below. Check your patella. You can also, now she's big enough to hurt. If you put a needle into a blood vessel, it will be painful. Blood vessels feel like a hot. Find your blood vessels and avoid them when you're needling. When you're bleeding, you want your blood vessels. So I want you to start looking like you haven't before for blood vessels because you know, patients get turned off when the needles hurt. 
I get so many patients from other practitioners who are torturing their patients, you know, by either using too large a needle. I use as fine a needle as I can. Well, not as fine, but I'm using a 3840 gauge needle because I want to use chi. I want to use strong stimulation. I don't want that needle to hurt. And so the patient, you know, doesn't want me to touch it or to, to not wield the, the available chi there. So I use a thinner needle. Um, a number three is about as thin as you can get for long needles like these. Uh, number three in Japanese uh, would be 36 maybe. Uh, anyway, look for blood vessels and you'll stop hurting go people. Just, go just a hair, go just a hair above that vessel. So we're coming up on stimulating it. here. Now you see me turning when side bleeding, to side. We want to hit the vessels. When we're needling, we want to avoid the vessels. So that's pretty strong stimulation. Large blood supply, large nerve supply, Whoops. big thigh. Big thigh. Not, she doesn't have large thighs, but thighs have oh, large nerve they're and blood supply. Powerful. So they're very powerful points. She has well, lovely now, thighs. <laughs> they have served her okay. well. Okay, so only for skin issues, only for skin, we would raise them before leaving the room. Holding on to that one, too. Check this out. Yeah, she, she wants these needles in. I try to pull them up. Put them back. Can't get them. We raise them on but the other side. But look how much I can she turn them. Mind if I Strong turn, stimulation in both directions with Dong's points. She must be tired. These are very good so for fatigue. So she's tired. She's tired because she got needled all day yesterday. She's getting needled all day today. And she started her period. So she's holding on to those points. So I put them back in and left her on the table for 45 minutes. Uh, four horses is a good 45 minutes uh, treatment. Okay, how do we get rid of this movie now? So go back to the PowerPoint, please. All of these movies are available right on a, on a really great DVD. Okay, so this is a drawing of, um, this is from the book. Here's the, here's gallbladder 30. Here's the top of the, the, here's the greater trochanter. Okay, popliteal crease, halfway is gallbladder 31. You can find middle four horses by finding gallbladder 31. It's a perfectly acceptable way. But do not use the patient's uh, middle fingertip. You know, I mean, look at me. I've got, my parents were both over six feet. Every sleeve is this short for me, right? I've got really long arms, but I've actually, I'm short-waisted with really long legs. So my middle finger is not landing on my gallbladder 31, and a lot of people's won't. And if you've got a bolster, like this is a, this picture is showing a bolster in a blanket. If you put a bolster under the legs, the middle finger is not going to hit gallbladder 31. So it's probably better to just come up to the top of the patella. Oh gosh, I'm sitting here using the pointer again. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'll just describe it better. Uh, so you can count the sun. I have the little ticks on that line. Uh, eight ticks up from the top of the patella is middle horse 8817. And then above and below, four horses are how many fingers apart? This is a test. Okay, three fingers apart. To go, it doesn't matter which one you do first. It really doesn't matter. Strong stimulation on the two outside points, then come back to the middle. You can even put it, go down with it and bring it back up again, and it'll send the chi back out in both directions. Uh, very, very powerful points because you're in a thigh, and thighs have a huge blood supply and a huge nerve supply. So all the thigh points are really, really powerful. Now, up in that right corner, you'll see a cross section of a thigh. I stuck that in because I want you to... You know, there's a lot of controversy about where are exactly four horses. They're, they're easy to find. They're incredibly powerful. I probably use them more than any other point pattern in my practice. They're very versatile. I treat a lot of immune system issues. I'm, do, I'm sort of focusing on that right now. You know, I started with HIV in the 80s in San Francisco, and I learned a lot about immune systems and also opportunistic diseases back then. And uh, just since then, immune system has been a, a, a real focus for me, and autoimmune is at this stage. In the last maybe four or five years, I've been studying autoimmune. It's fascinating what the body does. So anyway, 
we're that uh, 90, 90 uh, uh, sorry, 45 degree angle is coming out from the center line. You know, right where the top, the horizontal plane turns into the vertical plane, that's where Four Horses is. It's also going to be on a line coming straight up from the corner of the patella. And your third way of figuring things out is to measure from gallbladder 31. You're always free to do that. So, okay, this is, uh, this is how we find we're going to move on. Location uh, in your notes is carefully spelled out. We spend months doing our point locations. So you, if you're not the if you're the person who needs the written word to to memorize, then look at look at that. Um, it's uh, entering meridian is stomach, but really they're halfway between the stomach and the gallbladder. So that's probably why they have uh, such a good uh, effect on cough and asthma, pleurisy. I hope I'm moving my pointer again, sorry. Um, okay, so because they're between the gallbladder and the stomach channels, they're good for wind and phlegm. Wind and phlegm, so colds and flus and allergies and asthma, any kind of lung issue, okay, even nasal polyps. You don't find too many points for nasal polyps. Now, they're, they're also outstanding for psoriasis, itching, rashes, acne, any kind of skin disease, four horses are outstanding. Why? Okay, look at the reaction area. The reaction area is lung and liver. The lung governs the surface, right? The, the Wei Qi, the lung governs the skin. The liver cleans the blood. So when you have a toxic reaction, okay, hives, rashes, acne, these are little toxic skin eruptions. Uh, we're not talking about any kind of lesion. You're not going to, well, you could needle four horses, but don't ever needle over lesions or cup over lesions. Don't do anything like that. Don't needle, um, you know, uh, into psoriasis. It's painful. Don't cup psoriasis. You know, it'll crack and bleed. But um, because uh, four horses have what is what Don referred to as the reaction area of lung and liver. Liver cleans the blood, go, uh, lung governs the skin. That's what makes these points so outstanding for skin issues. Now we've also got ear here, okay, deafness, tinnitus, otitis media. We've got thyroid. Uh, we've got some eyes, uh, but I don't really use these for eyes, conjunctivitis or red eye relating to sclera. I don't use these for that. Chest pain, breast pain, rib or flank pain, yes. We can use four horses opposite side. Now, for all of those uh, conditions, we have other choices to make. So four horses would be good if it had something to do with lung or liver, if it had something to do with uh, stomach or gallbladder channel. Okay, so the gallbladder uh, governs the flank and the side of the breast. Stomach channel governs the stomach 17, okay, nipple. Uh, so um, we could use opposite four horses for breast pain. Uh, we could use bilateral four horses for breast pain. But we have other options too. We have other stomach channel options. We have other gallbladder channel options. For upper back pain, yay, four horses. This, right, because all the lung that the whole upper back are lung points and Dong system, they're points that are bled, and there many of them are lung points. But we have the UB lung relationship. Okay, I don't have a lot of time to get into that. We're at 12 o'clock already. So, but I'll just suffice to say, if you don't know Dong system, please take a webinar and study. Even just do a basic best of Dongs. Uh, um, e Lotus has all kinds of webinars on Dong's points. Uh, on my website, there's links to 80 hours of uh, continuing education. Oh darn, I just lost my screen again. Sorry. One moment. I thought I did turned off my energy saver. I don't know why I keep losing my screen. Okay. Um, yeah, there's 80 hours of continuing education online. You can get CEUs and PDAs for those. So. Go study Dong's points and get the theory. What I'm trying to say is the top secret, you know, inner working of Dong's points has to do with Tai Yin and Tai Yang. Okay, Tai Yin, Tai Yang affect each other. Xiao Yin, Xiao Yang affect each other. Jui Yin, Yang Ming are very connected. 
So that's the real inner working of uh, Dong's points, and you want to know how to utilize that that uh, part of the theory because it's it's the where the power is. Okay, it's it's why Dong's points are so incredibly immediately effective. You know, it just I I'm not saying textbook acupuncture doesn't work, but I will tell you I never like and never ever do any local needling. We're always going to the opposite side or the opposite end. By end, I mean if I'm treating the head, I'm on the feet. If I'm treating the feet, I'm on the head. If I'm treating the right, I'm on the left. If I'm treating the left, I'm on the right. So this is for structural problems. That means for, um, for bone, for nerve, for tendon ligament, for muscle, and for blood vessel. Okay, those five things. Bone, nerve, tendon ligament, muscle, and blood vessel. Those five things are structural problems. Okay, we're going to be using opposite side or opposite end, top to bottom, bottom to top. If we're treating organ systems, we're always going to be bilateral. Okay, for organ systems like hepatitis, asthma, coronary heart disease, allergies, which side are allergies on? Right, we're going to needle both sides, bilateral. So most of the thigh points are used bilaterally you can build your treatments around the thigh points they're huge they all have this huge blood supply and huge nerve supply so build your points around the thighs okay I mean your treatments around the thigh points and then you can add return to the nest and gyne if they're also having hot flashes or you can add wood anger if they're also pissed off right or you know their liver is congested you can add finger points not hand points necessarily but finger points can be added to almost any kind of treatment uh, so in a case like this, four horses is, you know, 90% of the time I'm going to be using four horses bilaterally. All right, that's most of the time. But there are times when I might use it opposite side. I could use it opposite side for chest pain, for breast pain, river flank pain. Okay, for sciatica, I could use it opposite side. Sciatica, this would be and lower back pain due to lung deficiency. So lung deficient sciatica is UB channel sciatica. Why? Because Tai Yin goes with Tai Yang. All right, this little piece of theory is a part you've got to know. All right, I uh, you know E Lotus webinars I'm sure talk about that. Um, but in in for if you we probably got I don't know 20 pages single spaced on four horses in my my newest book. We talk all about that. So anyhow. Um, check it out. More comments on four horses. I think I'm going to leave you to uh, look at this uh, last line here. You can also consider bleeding uh, three ear three or ear apex. Top of the ear bleeds really well. Good for skin diseases also. Really good for skin diseases. Also for high blood pressure. Also for insomnia. Also for eyes. You can bleed ear apex. So anyway, yeah. Let's move on. Um, Here's a little bit more. You can, you know, here's our Sancha 3 talking about doing that. All right, look at the second to bottom uh, bullet for acute or chronic cough or asthma. Add 10, 10, 19, and 20. These are the points on the chin. These are amazing points for asthma or for cough of any kind of cough, chronic or acute cough. They're called water through, water gold. In my mind, I reverse those, so water gold, water through, whatever. Uh, 19, uh, 10, 10, 19, and 20 are always done together. Okay, so I'm going to talk about those next because when you have patients who have had coronavirus and they come back with really compromised lungs, come back to your practice uh, with compromised lungs, then you might also want to add water gold, water through, two, four horses, and Sancha 3. Okay, fabulous treatment. Now that's a lot of needles. So you're not going to leave them too long. All right, so needle treatments with four horses are typically like 45 minutes, which seems like a long time for some people. When, you, when, you're intuitive, when your intuition has developed to the point that you feel the patient, okay, one of our objectives is to be quiet in your mind. Once you've studied the needles, uh, sorry, dung system, once you've studied the points, once you understand them, all right, you can't put your book under your pillow. That doesn't really work, although I did that when I was in school sometimes, when I was, you know, cramming for an exam the next day. 
stupid, but I was 20 something, right? So anyhow, um, you've got to study, you have to study. But once you know the system, and it's very easy to learn, those of you in the chat box who didn't find it difficult to learn, you put it is in, in the chat box for people because as systems go, if you've already been through the academia of, uh, of you know, um, acupuncture school, then you'll pick up four horses very quickly, okay? And not four horses, but dong system. I'm sorry. I realized I'm talking too much and getting tired. Uh, okay, so studying dong system will give you an edge like nothing else. And we um, really try to minimize the needles that we use when we're using Dong's points because more is not better. Every needle you put in has to have a very good reason for being there. If you put in extra points because you're hoping you're just going to hit and miss, you know, like something's got to work, right? This is the novice. This is the neophyte. This is the one who needs to study a lot more because every single needle is taken taking chi from your treatment, from your protocol, or from your uh, pattern, point pattern. So it better be there for a really, really good reason. Otherwise, it's distracting. It's dispersing. So we don't typically use six needles with four horses plus Sancha three plus four more. All right, we don't just automatically throw those all in. And if I'm treating allergies or colds and flus, I'm also going to put colon 20 needle towards... Uh, uh, Beyond, um, it's called uh, BE. BE in Dong's points is Yin Tong, and it's done a little bit higher. You needle one half sun above uh, Yin Tong and needle into it by pinching up the skin. Then you get under that area that's really firm if people have had a lot of acne. That area can be hard. Um, okay, so um, if I'm treating colds or flus or allergies, congestion, sinus congestion, I'm going to bring colon 20 out to the laugh lines and needle towards a yin tong or BE in Dong's system to clear that sinus in about 10 minutes. It's a horizontal needle. You see the needle tip moving. There's an easy way to do it, but I can't go into all that. I don't really have, I'm over time now anyway. Um, you guys, if you have to leave, I'm sorry, but if you can hang around, you'll get some more out of this. Uh, so anyway, I just rec I want you to recognize that this is a lot of needles, what I'm talking about here. Four horses plus water gold, water through, plus uh, Sancha three. That's a lot of needles in a Dong system protocol. So please don't overdo it and um, leave the points in, the needles in as, um, tune into your patient. Actually, that's where I went off here. I want you, once you know the points, okay, then you have to still your mind, quiet your mind when you're sitting across from someone and allow them to pierce you, to pierce your heart, all right? That's when you're going to know what to do. You don't want to be sitting there thinking, 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 looping, because you're not listening at that point. Every patient is broadcasting. They're broadcasting what's happening with them, what's important to them, what they need from you. Okay, you might, they might not know exactly what they need from you, but if you're listening quietly with your heart mind, okay, if you're listening, then you will know what to do. You're going to have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. Okay, I never get beyond plan A. Plan A is always going to work. I always know if my plan is going to work or not before I put the needles in. All right, so what I want you to do is pay attention to what the patient tells you after you've studied Dong's points, you can't just not study and then think the patient's going to tell you what to do. The patient's not going to know the points, all right? Are you, get, are you getting what I'm saying? They're going to tell you something about themselves which will stimulate or trigger the correct treatment in your mind, all right? You know, meditate, pray, whatever you want to do, but ask for that and you will receive information that way if you're open. And if you're not so busy, chattering away in your own brain, quiet your brain, learn to quiet your mind so that you can be fully present for the person that you're working with. And then exactly what to do will come to you. You'll know exactly what to do. Be careful. Don't use too many needles. So right now we're going to talk about what are gold, what are through. All right. These points are on the ball of the chin, needle towards... Stomach seven, needle towards the corner of the jaw. 
All right, both need both points. Let's go to the drawing and then I'll come back to the photo. Oh, I didn't have a drawing. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, I went the wrong way. Sorry. There it is. Okay, so we are measuring. Um, some people have a very pronounced ball on their chin. And if you go to either corner of the rainbow, we'll call it. Okay, at the end of the curve on the ball of the chin, that's where I put my first needle. That's 10, 10, 20. It's going to be a little bit uh, medial to 10, 10, 19 because 10, 10, 19 is located directly down from the corners of the mouth. Now, as we get older, those corners start extending, right? So look for the pigment from the corner of the pigment. Don't go with the line. Don't go with the crease. Go with the pigment. And you're going to be halfway between 10, 10, 20 and the mouth uh, pigment halfway will be 10, 10, 19. So it's actually going to be 0.4 below the corner of the mouth. So first I'm going to put in 10, 10, 20, angle towards the corner of the jaw. Then I'm going to come to the corner of the mouth and come down halfway or 0.4 below the corner of the mouth. And again, angle towards the corner of the jaw. All right, these, uh, you need to be able to see the tip of the needle moving uh, beneath, horizontally beneath the skin, you should be able to see the tip of the needle moving if you are superficial enough with your needle. If you go too deep with these needles, you'll hit the, when you come to the masseter muscles, which are very strong, they're super powerful points. And all powerful points have a huge uh, nerve supply and a huge blood supply, especially these, right? You could crack a walnut with your jaw if you had to. So uh, you don't want to plow into the masseter muscles. You want to be on top of them, right underneath the skin. If you're um, too deep when you put these needles in, you hit the masseter muscle, and I guarantee they will not only flinch, you'll get some body language about that, but they'll also get a bruise. They'll get a bruise at the insertion point. When you pull that needle out, you'll get a little drop of blood, then they'll get a bruise, and then people will be trying to wipe off the bruise on, you know, uh, yeah, no. So try not to bruise these points. People don't like uh, bruises, especially on their face. Uh, let's look at the picture one more time because we don't have a movie here. Okay, very superficial insertion. Some people, the needles will cross in the middle of 10, 10, 20. The needles, needles will cross in the midline. Just depends on the shape of their face. All right, if they don't cross, it's fine. But if they don't cross, you might be too deep also. So just check that. You want to see the tip of your needle progressing beneath the, the surface as, they're, um, as you're targeting or your trajectory is the corner of the jaw. These are wonderful points for any kind of cough or asthma. All right, you can go ahead and look at your location. I'll let you read through that again. But you're in the, the reaction area is the kidney, okay? We learned this in acupuncture school, right? Around the mouth is kidney. So these are very good for kidney chi deficiency. Water gold, water through. Water is kidney, right? Gold is lung or metal, metal. So water gold, water through means kidney and lung points. So for asthma, cough, any kind of cough, phlegm, we can also use them for lower back pain. Miriam has a really funny story about one time when she was in China and she was in a clinic with a bunch of men. Miriam was, uh, was definitely a feminist. She never married, by the way. She never had children. She made, uh, she made a promise, or I should say her parents made a promise to her that um, uh, they would allow her not to marry if she uh, taught the word of the Lord, right? They were missionaries. So Miriam had eight brothers, and by God, she did not want to marry. No way. So she had these um, proverbs and psalms on, the, on a poster on the ceiling above her treatment tables, and that's how she kept her word to her parents uh, by not, uh, she never proselytized. She wasn't that way, not at all. She was a very wonderful human being, very um, humanitarian, very altruistic, incredible practitioner, incredible person. If I talk too much about her, I'll start to cry because, boy, I loved her so much. So anyway, but she was in this clinic in China, and they were treating a patient for lower back pain, and he was in a great deal of pain. He had, I don't know what he had exactly, but he was in a, a lot of trouble. 
And she asked them if uh, she could give it a whirl, and they laughed at her like, ha ha, you think you can treat this patient, right? So she loved to tell this story. So she, uh, she needled water gold water through, and as soon as she put these four needles in, as soon as she put them in, the patient coughed, just spontaneously coughed. And the moment he coughed, everybody in the room realized that his lower back pain was enormously better immediately because had he coughed that way uh, previously, he would have landed on the floor. He was in that much pain. So they all looked at her like, whoa, what did you do? And how did you know? And what are these points? Right? And that was one of her um, favorite stories. So anyhow... You can see these points are good for acute lumbar sprain, you know, when you twist and lift and ah, I can't move, right? right? So then you put in water gold, water through on that patient and you cup their lower back. And in about 10 minutes, they're like, whoa, I'm like 80% better. Within an hour, you've got to fix one treatment, water gold, water through and cupping. All right, but also you're going to see here weakness of the legs, exhaustion, dizziness, vertigo, blurred eyed. What do these all have in common? Sexual dysfunction, impotence, and large prostate. They all have in common kidney, kidney weakness. So water gold, water through is for kidney. For any kind of acute or chronic cough, you know, cough and pee towards the end of a bad cold. You, every time you cough, you pee. Water gold, water through. Okay, um, I've probably talked about most of this, connecting metal and water, we didn't talk about, but regulating lung chi, we did talk about reversal of lung chi. Cough and asthma is a reversal, it's a reversal of lung chi, so is hiccups or vomiting. Now, I'm not going to use these for hiccups or vomiting, but if they've got a hiccup issue and it resolves, it's why. Okay, let's see. Um, Funny thing with the type there, that just was something that happened in the the uh, transfer, nothing is essential there. I've probably talked about most of this. Here we are. Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. We're 22 minutes over. I hope that's okay with you. I've got a patient coming in shortly, so uh, any, oh, but you know, I did want to talk a few things about um, COVID in terms of your practice. You know, everybody's probably already knows all this, okay? So nothing new here. I'll just quickly say a few things that you might not have thought about. Uh, if you're, you're opening your practice again and having patients come in, uh, uh, start my webcam. Is this over? Let me start my webcam again, see if it starts. Screen sharing. Can you guys in the chat room still see me? Type yes. Um, am I still? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, yes. Okay. I want to talk about a couple of things before I actually shut this down. And that is if you're opening your practice, you've got to be very, very careful because we're going to have a second wave. We're having a second wave here in Santa Cruz. Oh, the video is not really working right, is it? But you can hear okay, right? Uh, okay, so second wave is happening because we're beach town, tourist town, and we've got people spilling over the hill. Silicon Valley is coming to the beach, and they're bringing their COVID with them, and we've got our own. A few weeks ago, Santa Cruz was the center of all of California for the most uh, cases of COVID-19. Off again. Uh, yes, hearing is okay. So, you know, if you lose the audio, well, that doesn't matter. Just listen for a minute. Have your patients leave their outer garments in the car because the outer garments do not get laundered, all right? So they're not trustworthy. Always have your pay. I make them agree. They have to agree or they can't come to wear freshly laundered, laundered clothing. If they don't leave their garment, outer garment in the car, they're asked to. They're met at the door, all right? From the door, my office manager escorts them into the bathroom. She turns the faucets on, all right, because we don't know where their hands have been. Their steering wheels are not trustworthy, all right? It's one of the worst areas. How many people, how many of you are cleaning your steering wheels regularly? You better be. Every time you leave the store and they have a little wipes, grab one and clean your steering wheel with it. Okay, so she meets them at the door. She escorts them into the bathroom. They wash their arms up to elbows. She squirts them then with hand sanitizer. I make my own. It's fabulous. It's a aloe vera from my garden with alcohol. It's a great way to do it. 
Okay, then we take them into the treatment room. We have paper down on the tables. They bring their own clean sheet, freshly laundered clean sheet. They put, I put that sheet over them, on top of which I will put another flannel sheet just to keep them warm. Okay, uh, basically that's what I want to say is, you know, be as careful as you can be. You've got to wear your mask. Now, I, it's also true that uh, breathing uh, CO2, not getting enough oxygen, is not good for anybody. I've been having a lot of headaches, I think, from too much mask. So I will wear my mask. I keep their mask on, but once their needles are off, I will take one ear off and open their mask for them for the duration of their treatment. Okay, you do what you think is best. We all have to decide about sterilization. I love you. I thank you. And I'm so happy that you came. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Susan, for a great class today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We hope you were able to learn a lot and take what you learn and apply it to your clinic. The class today has been recorded, and it will be available on our YouTube channel as well as our eLotus website. So if you would like to watch it again, please tune into YouTube. Just give us a few minutes to upload that for you. All right, guys, thank you so much, and we'll see you at our next webinar. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.